In this video, we're going to look at something called partitioning a segment. As you watch the video, remember that you want to put your cell phone with its Instagram and its Snapchat, put that somewhere out of sight, out of mind, so that you can give your full attention to the video for the next 10 or 15 minutes. The other thing to recall is if you see something that doesn't quite make sense, you can always stop, rewind, and replay that portion of the video to see if that makes it make a little bit more sense for you. Watching a video for learning and understanding is much different than watching a video for entertainment. All right, so what does it mean to partition a segment? It means really just to divide it up into a given number of pieces, usually based upon some ratio that they give to you, like what we've got going on here in number one. They tell us that they're giving us this line segment with endpoints A and F, they're also telling us that it has already been divided into three equal parts using points B, C, D, and E. And in part A, they want us to find some point P such that the ratio from A to P and P to F is 1 to 4. So in other words, if I start by looking at this and I look at endpoint A and endpoint F, I'm going to go ahead and look at the entire line segment. They want me to split this up into such a way or such a ratio that one of the parts contains one of the five pieces, the other of the parts contains the other of the four pieces. So in other words, I want to put point P right there at point B because now one of my uh, parts is contained from A to P and the other four of my parts is contained between point P and point F. So the most appropriate spot to locate or to put point P at is at point B. And I'm going to go ahead and erase because I like to write and draw all over these diagrams as I'm working the problems. I think it makes a lot more sense uh, if I use some of the colors. In part B, they're asking us to now find the location of point Q, such that the ratio between AQ and QF is 3 to 2. So again, my endpoints here are A and F. But in this particular instance now, they're asking me to use a different ratio. So I still want to break this into five equal pieces, but now when I go to apply my ratio, I want one of my parts to contain three of those pieces, and I want my other part to contain two of those pieces. So I'm just going to move along this segment until I find such a place that one of those contains three of those parts and the other contains two. So I like point D here for the location of point Q. I have to go back and change that to a point D. And then the last one they want me to do is find point R such that the ratio between points B and R and R and E is 1 to 2. And immediately I notice here that this ratio looks a little bit different. I'm only looking at three pieces. So I've got to take a look at now where my endpoints go. Point B is one of the two endpoints. Point E is the other of the two endpoints. So in other words, they want me to start at point B and end at point E and use only that part of the line segment to do this question. So they want me to locate point R now such that Again, one of the parts is one of the pieces, the other part contains two pieces. So if I move just along this line segment here, point R is going to go here at C, such that that contains one of the pieces, and the other segment contains two of the pieces. So I like point C here for the location of point R. All right, let's go ahead and move into the coordinate plane. But before we do that, we have to talk a little bit about what it means to be a directed line segment. A directed line segment, to make things easy, has a starting point and an ending point. So directed line segment AB starts at point A, ends at point B. Sounds pretty simple, but it's pretty important moving forward here. In number two, they give us this line segment AB with the following endpoints. They're asking us to once again find the coordinates of point B, P, such that the given ratio is 1 to 2. And as you might have already guessed, the very first thing that I'm going to do here is go ahead and plot those points so that I have a visual of what I'm working with. 
Now what makes this a little bit tricky here is that this line segment is at a slant. It's not perfectly horizontal. It's not perfectly vertical. So what I'm going to do is break it into its horizontal piece. And its horizontal part would be that green line segment. And its vertical part, which would be the purple line segment. So again, I'm going to start by looking at the horizontal part, which is exactly three units long. And you can go over to the graph and count them. Three units. And I want to take those three units, and I want to divide them up evenly using the given ratio. The given ratio here is 1 to 2. So I know that I want to divide this into three equal parts. So I'm going to take those three units, divide it up into three parts, and that gives me exactly one unit per part. And now that I've done that with the horizontal line segment, I'm going to go do the same thing with the vertical piece. The vertical piece is exactly six units high. But again, I want to divide it using the given ratio, which we decided was one to two. So it's still divided up amongst those three equal parts, giving us here in the vertical direction two units per part. So now in the horizontal, I've got one unit to the part, one unit per part, and in the vertical direction, two units per part. And since these are nice whole numbers, I can go ahead and I can start at point A, and I can move one unit to the right, two units up. Move another unit to the right and two units up. Move another unit to the right and two units up, and I've successfully divided line segment AB into three equal parts. Now the only decision I have to make is where to put point P such that that ratio is 1 to 2. Well, keep in mind that directed line segment AB starts at point A. So I want to start here, and I want to have one of those three parts be at the beginning, two of those three parts be at the end, making the location of point P right there where I marked in blue on the graph. So if I go ahead and count the number of units, I find that the location of point P has coordinates 4, 6. That one was a little nifty because we could do it entirely on the graph. The next one, we're going to switch things up again, or up a little, and see how we can use some calculations along with the graph in order to do a directed line segment or a partitioning question. Once again, in number three, they've given us the endpoints. Once again, they're asking us to find the coordinates of this point P that divides it into the given ratio. So just like before, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot my points and graph the line segment. And as you can tell from the picture, this is a pretty steep line segment. Again, my mission here is going to be to go ahead and to look at the vertical part and the horizontal part. The horizontal part is that one little measly green line segment. The vertical part is a little bit longer. The blue line segment. This time, because the ratio is 2 to 3, I'm going to look at dividing this up into three, or sorry, five equal parts. So I want to take that horizontal piece which is exactly one unit long, and I want to divide it equally amongst the five parts. And when I do one divided by five on my calculator, it tells me that each piece is two-tenths of a unit. So two-tenths of a unit per part. And that's making me feel a little bit uncomfortable. But I know I did my calculations correctly. Let's go ahead and look at my vertical piece. If I count the number of units on the graph there, it's six. And again, we're taking those six units and we're dividing 
dividing it into five equal parts, making each piece 1.2 units. And by the nature of the question, the fractions and the decimals here, depending on how you write your answer, make it very difficult to count on the graph. So we're going to employ a slightly different strategy here. We're going to remember that directed line segment AB starts at point A, and then point A had coordinates 6, 10. So we want to start up here all the way at the top. We want to move down along the blue horizontal line segment and to the left along the green, or sorry, the blue vertical line segment and to the left along the green horizontal. Well, when we move down, that's like subtracting from the y value. And when we move to the left, that's like subtracting from the x value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 0.2 or the 2 tenths of a unit from the x, and I'm going to subtract the 2 tenths of uh, 1.2 units away from the y. And when I do that, I arrive at the point whose coordinates are 5.8, 8.8. And then I'm going to repeat that same exact process four more times and making sure that I end up at point B with coordinates 5, 4. So let me give myself a little bit more room to work here. And again, I'm just going to repeat that same process now four more times. Let's do it a third time. And a fourth time. And then one more time should finish us up here. What I like about this is we've now verified that we've done this correctly because we've ended here at point B with coordinates 5, 4. Remember, what we're really looking for here, though, is we're looking for point P, which will divide this into that ratio 2 to 3. So what we want to do is we want the beginning part of this to contain two of the parts and the other piece of our line segment to contain three of those parts. So I like for the coordinates of point P, 5.6, comma, 7.6. So that one is a little bit trickier, both in the computation, we're working with some fractions and decimals, which can be a little bit uncomfortable, and in the fact that you really have to keep the direction in mind. Am I moving to the left and subtracting or moving to the right and adding? You'll have to be very, very, very careful. You, um, as always, I do want you to take a few minutes, summarize the key ideas and the important takeaways from the video, and then see if you can apply what you've learned to solve the questions on the next page.